Okay, first of all, I want to tell you that this video is going to be a reference video, meaning that you're not expected to memorize all these things. Uh, I'm just going to show you all the properties of limits, and you can just start using them from now on uh, naturally. And, and if you need to go back and actually look a property up, you can watch this video again. Okay, so the limit as x approaches c of a. So this is c and a are both constants. They're just numbers. Well, if x is approaching c, a is a constant. It's not going anywhere. So this is just a. Let me give you now a concrete example of that. So this will be, let's do the limit as x approaches 10 of, of 2. Well, it doesn't matter where x is going. 2 is just always 2. So this is equal to just 2. And then just to give you some more intuition, some graphical uh, reasoning, the line or 2, if you graph just the number 2, it's just a horizontal line. So you could see it doesn't matter where x is moving to. We, x could be moving to anywhere. And this function is just always at 2. OK, so that's that property. Pretty easy. Let's look at the next one. The limit as x approaches c of just regular old x, well, this is just equal to c, meaning we can just take c and, and plug it in for x. So that's a property we're going to use all the time. We're just going to take the limit and plug it in for x. OK, same thing happens when you have x to any power. You just take c and plug it in. So this is equal to c to the n. Let me show you examples of, of both of those. So the limit as x approaches negative uh, 2 of x is just equal to negative 2. We just plug it in for x. The limit as x approaches pi of x cubed, well, this is just equal to pi cubed. We just take pi and plug it in for x. Easy enough. OK, let's keep going. There's only a few more left here. So then, then the limit of a sum. So in other words, if you take the limit, you're summing two different things up. Well, this is just equal to, you, you can break this up into two limits. So the limit as x approaches c of f of x plus the limit as x approaches c of g of x. So we can break this, 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 lim, uh, this one limit into two limits. Let me show you an example. Um, I guess actually I'll have to do this example down here just for space. So the limit as x approaches c of let's say x squared plus 3x. Or not, not even c, but let's say this is a number. Let's use a number. So x approaches 2. Well, this is the same thing as the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x. And now we can just use our substitution property that we just learned, just plug it in, and we get 2 squared plus 3 times 2, that's 4 plus 6 equals 10. So this limit would equal 10. OK, so that's that. The same thing is going to happen for products. In other words, the limit of a product is the product of the limits. Maybe you've heard it, heard it said like that before in class or something. Well, this is the same thing as just splitting this up into two limits, f of x times the limit as x approaches c of g of x. So we can do an example of that. Let's say the limit as x approaches uh, 3 of 3x times 4. Uh, well, let's say times 4x. Well, we could just simplify this, but um, let, let's do it as, as a product of the limit. So this will be the limit as x approaches 3 of 3x times the limit as x approaches 3 of 4x. And now we can plug our 3 in, and we're going to get 9 times 12, which is equal to 90, 98. Is that right? 90, no, 108, right, 108. OK. Why do I feel like that's wrong? 90 plus 18, yeah. 
Oh, nine, yeah, 90 plus 18. Okay, sorry. I don't, I don't know why I thought my, my arithmetic was off there, my multiplication. Okay, so the same thing is going to happen with, with this quotient or the, 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 that, the, the, the um, f of x divided by g of x. This is just going to be, we can take the limit uh, of f of x and divide it by, oops, divide it by the limit of g of x. So we can just split this up split this up into two separate limits and we don't even need to do an example of that it's just going to be the same thing that we've been doing like let's say x divided by 3x squared or something who knows plus one let's say well uh, also you you just have to be careful that the limit as x approaches c of g of x does not equal zero so in other words the, this is only true if the denominator doesn't equal zero okay and then finally this last property the limit as x approaches c of a times f of x, so I'm just rewriting this, this is equal to a times the limit, the limit as x approaches c of f of x. Meaning if you have a constant multiple, you can pull it outside of the limit. So let's take a look at that. Let's say we had the limit as x approaches 4 of 2 times x squared plus 1. We can take this 2 and, and pull it out, out. So this is equal to 2 times the limit as x approaches 4 of x squared plus 1. And now we can use our substitution property and we're just going to get 2 times 4 squared plus 1. This is 2 times that whole thing. And that's just going to be 16 plus 1 is 17 times 2 is 34. So this limit, this total limit was equal to 34. Okay, so those are the properties. Like I said, this video is meant mostly for reference. And we're just going to start using these naturally because these, the properties of limits behave a lot like what we're used to for functions. So it, it, it will start to become really, really natural for us. Okay, see you in the next video. We'll actually start solving some interesting limits.